Hello there, Will Patillo here, and in this lesson I'm going to be dealing with moving platforms. Uh, but to make it a little uh, more extensible, we're going to make sure that it can move between multiple points in order, or reverse order, or uh, to move randomly between a number of different locations, maybe to stop at some locations before moving on, to change color. Uh, basically, you're just creating a foundation in uh, the code that we write today. Um, so that you can extend it to however you need. Uh, so getting started, I'll need to create a uh, platform in the scene. So I'll just create a cube right here, and let's make it a little bigger, five by, uh, say, 0.2 by, by uh, five. Okay, and let's see, yeah, it could be a little thicker than that, 0.5. All right, that looks fine for a platform right there. And uh, now I'm gonna need to create a script to get it to move somewhere. So right click, create C sharp script. And uh, the behavior that I'm creating here is moving to some target position. So I'm gonna call it uh, move to target. Uh, and attach that to the cube, just like that. Uh, I'll rename this cube as a target, okay. So now open up this script. And the essential logic as to how the script is gonna work is that in the update loop, every single frame, it's going to move a small distance uh, towards its target. We want to expose uh, how fast it moves and as well as what the target is. Uh, and then, yeah, so we'll keep the update and get rid of start. Uh, I don't really need these items up here, so just using Unity Engine. And we'll start by uh, declaring some of our uh, variables up here. So serialize field float. So, uh, we'll need to yeah, say what our speed is. And uh, serialize field transform target. And now in update, uh, first we'll just have a little bit of a safety check. If uh, there is no target, so this is the same as saying if target equals null, then we'll just exit early and return. Um, because if this isn't in place, we'll just be getting errors all over the place. So um, yeah, if that's empty, just ignore the script for a while. All right, so next uh, we'll want to find what direction that we're gonna move. So uh, var direction uh, equals, and that's gonna be the target position minus our own position and then normalize it. So in parentheses, target.position minus transform dot position, and then dot normalized. I'm going to calculate our step. So var step. So this is the uh, distance. This is the uh, direction times distance that we actually move, the, the vector we actually move by So is our step. And that is the direction times the speed we have right here, times time dot delta time. Okay, so this is for frame rate independence, this is for editor control, and this is the direction uh, that we had right there. We have our step, so now we'll, we can actually just move. So I'll say uh, transform.translate and uh, by step, and then I'll also just specify uh, space.world. Um, so we, we move this amount in world space. Uh, and I'll just stop with that for now um, and um, to test this out. So make sure we have some number in speed. I'll start out with a three and, oh, actually this should have been called the uh, platform. I named it target earlier uh, because what we are going to need as a separate object is the target. Okay, and this target I'll just place like above it a bit uh, and the platform uh, that's fine, maybe I'll drop it down somewhat, see what this looks like in the game. Yeah, the platform's down there and the target is up somewhere else. Uh, so now I can assign this target to the platform and let's see what happens. So I start the game, platform moves up to get to where the target is and then it stops. Uh, however, it's jittering a little bit. And the reason for that is because it is overshooting the target. Uh, so we want this to stop once it reaches the target. And the way we know that we've reached the target is when we're really close to it. Now we could put a stopping distance up here and define it up here, like say 0.1 or something. Um, but something I'd like to just kind of auto-calculate it and just 
make the stopping distance the distance of the step. Um, that might not be totally precise, but I, I find it works uh, fairly well. So just uh, find whether we are at the target equals, that's going to be the distance to the target. Uh, so that is, um, actually I'll just put in a comment right now, distance to target, because we actually haven't calculated that yet. And, uh, and then it'll be whether that's less than step.magnitude. Okay, uh, so actually before this can work, I need to calculate that distance to target. And so var distance equals, uh, and I'll just say use the built-in method of vector three dot distance target dot position transform dot position. Okay, so this, this gets the distance between these two points and stores it here. And now I can finish this off and say if distance is less than or equal to the magnitude of this step. Uh, and that will tell us whether we are at the target. Now down here in this transform.translate, I can just put in a conditional. So if not at target, then we move. All right, so make sure that's saved. Run the game, switch over to scene view. And it arrives, and it's nice and stopped and steady. Uh, now, one other thing uh, is that if I take this target and I move it around, the platform will automatically move with it because it's always trying to follow until it's arrived, and then it stops. Okay. So the next uh, step of this is going to be adding some waypoints to move to predefined locations, say like from here over to here, down to here, down to here, and essentially. Uh, the way we're going to make that happen is we'll build several different waypoints, just empty transforms located wherever we like, and then uh, s and then set this target field uh, to those waypoints when the platform reaches them. So the first thing that will be needed for that to work is this input script, or this move to target script, is what figures out whether we've reached the target. Uh, but right now, move to target is the only thing that knows. Uh, so this script now needs to broadcast out uh, essentially this at target um, or something like it uh, to anything that's interested. And so that means I'm going to create a uh, serialized field unity event, and I'll just call it on reach target. Uh, and because I'm using unity event, I'll need to uh, add a using statement up, up at the top. So using unity engine dot events. I swear I can type. Okay. So there, and now we have this on reach target. And then uh, we'll just say if at target on reach target dot invoke. Now, one thing I'd like to change about this right off the bat is this is going to broadcast this on reach target continuously every frame that the um, platform is at the target. And that seems a little excessive to me. I mean, you, you suppose you could keep that. It might, I'm not sure if it'll break anything, uh, but I like this to only happen just at the moment we reach it. Um, so for that, I'll just create a little um, private variable right here. Uh, so um, bool was at target because that's essentially what tells us when we just uh, when something has just happened you store what it, uh, its state its pre, pre its prior state and then when its current state doesn't match the prior state that's when you know that it's changed uh, and then at the end you always update the prior state so to show you what that looks like uh, if at target and not was at target then we have this on target reached. And then at the end of this, was at target equals at target. Uh, so at the end of this update loop, we're always updating this uh, so that it'll be stored for the next time through the loop. And uh, so the, that way, the only condition that this will be reached is if we were not there the last frame and then we are there this frame. Uh, so that this kind of prior of something 
uh, is a good way to get those state changes that you can use pretty frequently. Uh, next, I want to verify that this works as expected because I added some bit of tricky logic in here. So I'm just going to make a general purpose um, print to console script right here. Um, so I'll just call this, yeah, print to console. The nice little debugging script that I uh, use a lot. And add that to the, oh, I'll use it, add it to the platform for now. Uh, so add this print to console. Um, and let's see, now in this on reach target, bring in itself, go with this uh, print to console. And, oh wait, I didn't actually write this yet. So go in here and public void. Uh, and also just say print takes in a string value and say debug.log value. Okay, get rid of the libraries I don't need. Okay, that's it for my print to console script. Now in this move to target, I go to print to console and print, and then I just put in my little uh, message right here. So arrived at target. Great, and now I'll go here and make sure I'm not maximized, that my console is visible. And now I run the game and the, this moves it hits somewhere and then it arrives at the target. And although it looks like it happened twice, uh, which might cause issues later, but we'll deal with that if it comes up. So I'll jump the X somewhere else, it moves, and it when it arrives, it gets there. Uh, so I'll clear these out, shrink uh, Y down, maybe Z as well, and it arrives. Oh, and it's only playing once. Actually, I guess that first one may have been from right at the beginning. Uh, okay, so that, um, that is all. Um, next, okay, so this platform is now able to tell other things when it reaches somewhere. Uh, so next we need to use this on reach target instead of just printing the console to uh, cause it to change what its target is. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna start by changing this to waypoint, and I'll just put in parentheses zero, that way when I copy it, it automatically goes to one. Switch over to scene view. So starting off, waypoint zero is my destination, and then I'll put waypoint one uh, somewhere else, like over here. Okay, and uh, then in this uh, platform, let's just say when we reach the target, then we'll set our, um, then we'll, uh, then we'll change our target right here, uh, just from zero to one. So at this point, we're just testing two waypoints. Uh, however, right now, there isn't really a way to set the target. Like if I look at this move to target, uh, I can't just, that value isn't, isn't in there. And that, that would be true even if I made the value public. So for that, I'll need to uh, create a public void set target transform uh, value and now I can just say target equals value. Okay, this allows us to change this target field through a unity event. Uh, so now instead, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll keep that print to console and now I'll also bring in the platform and say uh, move to target, set target, and set, the, set it to waypoint one. Uh, so now if I go in here and I watch the target field as I run the game, it starts off going to waypoint zero, and when it reaches it, it moves to waypoint one, and then stops. Okay, well, we have a little bit of a problem now, is that yes, we got two waypoints in place, uh, but how would we make more? Because it only, it doesn't know what target it's reached, it's, it just knows when it's reached a target. And uh, so we can't, and we can't really be, be dynamically changing these uh, unity events or, or what it goes to. Uh, so the way that I'm going to deal with that is have the move to target call a method in the waypoint, and then the waypoint decides what happens, uh, rather than putting everything on the platform to figure uh, to figure all this stuff out. All right. So so now to have the waypoint uh, actually respond, instead of using this uh, on reach target uh, unity event, just uh, open up some braces right here. 
and we're going to need to get a component that we can expect to be on the waypoints. And then if that special component is present, uh, call a general method on there saying, hey, we've arrived, um, so that the waypoint can respond. Uh, so let's, first, let's create that other component. Uh, and I could call it a, um, well, I'll just call it a, this essentially is just going to relay information to somewhere else. Uh, so I'm just going to call it a relay. And open that up. And say public void. And uh, I'll just, I don't know what to call this, so I'll just call it input. Um, doesn't take, doesn't need any arguments right now. Um, so this is something else communicates with the relay. We're, we're just setting, setting a, a method up here. Now in the move to target, I can say uh, if we've arrived at the target, then say target, uh, let's see, sorry, var relay, or actually, um, yeah, sure. Var relay equals target dot get component relay. All right, and then if there is a relay, so if relay, this is the same as saying uh, if relay not equals null, then relay dot dot input. Dot replay relay. And I'll put in the space there. Okay, and now if the thing, if the target that we reached doesn't have this relay component, then simply nothing will happen. There'll be no errors. Uh, but if there is, uh, then we get to call this method in input, and you know who knows what'll happen. So on this relay, uh, I'll put in a put in our uh, our Unity event here. So actually, I'll just, I can just, uh, as soon as I don't really need it and move to target anymore, I'll just cut it from move to target and put it inside of relay and make sure I'll also move this uh, using unity engine dot events. Put that here as well. Okay, and now on this input, I'll say on reach target dot invoke. Okay, let's test that out again. And I'll just uh, say put on the waypoint. Uh, attach the relay to the waypoint zero. Attach another way, uh, waypoint relay to waypoint one, and uh, just I'll have uh, waypoint zero. Uh, I'll, I'll call that print method just to see that it works. Print to console. Print uh, point zero reached. Okay, and just a quick check of that before I move on. So right here, platform moves. And once it gets to this point, we'll say that point zero reached. And nothing else happens um, because we removed some of that uh, Unity event logic from the platform. OK, so that's all working as expected. Now, instead of just printing the console, we'll make something more useful happen. We can say uh, add another event here and have the platform set its a move to target, set target to waypoint one. And then also, can have waypoint one uh, tell the platform move to target set target waypoint zero. So when the platform gets to zero, it'll call the relay. Relay will tell the platform to change its target to one. So then the platform moves to one. Once it gets there, same thing happens that makes it go back to zero. So if I start the game. Waypoint zero is reached, then it goes over to one, bounces back, and now it's continuously moving between two points. And if that's all you need from your platform, then you could stop there, but uh, let's keep going. So one problem you might imagine happening right now is, okay, that's fine for zero and one, but that's gonna be really tedious, uh, setting that waypoint around to the platform and you know, with setting up these Unity events, if you say have hundreds of waypoints. Um, I mean, yeah, you could just power through it, but uh, it'd be nice to automate it. Whenever we're repeating the same process over and over, I want to automate things as much as possible. So I'll start off uh, by making this waypoint into a uh, prefab. And actually, I'm, before that, I'm going to create another empty object, and I'm going to call it a uh, path so that I can put the waypoint inside of it. 
uh, just for organization. Also put the platform inside of here as well. Uh, and now in take this waypoint zero, drag it in here and make that into a prefab. And so that we can, you know, duplicate this and all the, actually I'll go ahead and duplicate it now. Get several of them, uh, move them around on the scene. So let's see, have a uh, waypoint zero, just leave it down here where the platform is already. One over here, two can be there, and three, I'll just bring it over here. All right. Now, uh, to in order to automate this, uh, actually, uh, yeah, so in order to automate this, instead of having each waypoint do something unique, I'm going to just have each of them uh, do the same thing. That is, tell the path that, hey, I've been reached, and then have the path have an automated way of cycling through all of these waypoints. Uh, so essentially what this path needs to do is, uh, when it receives some signal, to get a transform from this array of transforms and then send that out to the platform. Uh, so I'm going to create a new script called create C sharp script and I'll call it uh, get transform from array because uh, that's what it what it actually does. Uh, the fact that it's being used for a set of waypoints is totally incidental. Uh, and so attach that to the path and we'll open this up. Okay, get rid of the libraries I don't need. Get rid of start and update. And I'll declare some variables here. Start with a serialized field. Uh, get an array of transforms. So transform with the little square brackets. And I'll just call it transforms. Uh, and then something's going to need to happen when uh, we uh, when we arrive at it, or namely we're going to be, need to send the desired transform out to something else, such as the platform. Um, so I'll need to have a Unity event that sends a transform. Uh, so actually I'm just going to create down here, make uh, outside of the class so it's accessible to the whole project, uh, serializable, uh, which means I need the system uh, using statement at the top, public class, and I'll just call it a transform event, because it's like a unity event, except that it sends a transform. And this will inherit from unity event and um, include and, and send a transform. And then we just have those closing braces. Oh, and then since I have unity event here, then I need to have be using unity engine.events. Now, actually, realistically, I would say if you're you know, really working on this, uh, I'd put transform event in its own uh, script. That way you can put other things like it, int event, string event, um, bool event, whatever else like that, uh, following the same pattern all in one place. Move it from project to project so you're not like rewriting it constantly. Uh, but this will work for now. So uh, now that I have this, I can now say serialize field transform event. And uh, I'll just call it output because this outputs a transform. All right, so the starting out, uh, we want these, all these different waypoints to just cycle uh, between each other. Uh, so I'll start by creating a uh, public void cycle method. And uh, this doesn't really need any arguments right now. Uh, and so to cycle between the different points, we we're gonna need to save the index of the current transform that we're at. So I'll create another variable up here, int index. And uh, so then when this cycle is reached, we'll, we can just say uh, index plus plus to increment the index. Uh, but before going on, we want to make sure that we haven't gotten outside of the bounds of our array. So I'll say uh, if index is greater than or equal to transforms.length, then index equals zero. So that way, when we get beyond the whole uh, end of the list, we'll cycle back to zero. Uh, and then once, once we figured out what our index is with this little safety check right here, then we can say outputs.invoke. Uh, and that will be the uh, transforms at the index. So this, this is how we output the transform of interest uh, is right here. All right, so let's uh, wire this up now. So we have our path, 
I get a set of transforms, and so let's see, I have one, two, three, four of them. So four, make sure to get all of them. And so we'll drag in zero, one, two, and three. Um, if you have like hundreds of these and you don't want to drag them in, then you could uh, you could use a like a get children um, kind of thing or uh, for each transform in transforms uh, to, to get all the, the children of this. But uh, I'd rather just drag them in so that I have control over it and it doesn't matter if I have other objects kind of also in the list. Just to keep things a bit simpler. Now then on the output, I will tell the platform to move to this target that we just figured out, the one that we found in this list. Then on these waypoints, I'll just uh, hold shift. Actually, I'll just uh, take this zeroth one right here, bring in, instead of uh, directly telling the platform to set its target, we'll tell the path, uh, get transform from array to cycle. And I can actually just apply all um, and actually that doesn't work because uh, this path is outside, is, is above the, the waypoints. So to just get the rest of them, I'll click on one, hold shift, click on the rest of them, and bring in path, and just set it the same way. So now all of them are telling it to cycle. Okay, now so if I run the game, and I'll watch the platform to uh, see what uh, target it has. So now it's going to waypoint one, and now it's going to two, and now it's going down to three, and now it's going back to zero, and once it gets to zero, it cycles back to one, and to two, and to three. All right, nice. So, but what if, say, we want to cycle backwards? Um, and you know this, the cycle is assuming that we're going to zero to one to two to three back to zero. Uh, what if we want to go the other way? Uh, well, that's very similar to cycling. So I'm just going to add an argument to this cycle and say uh, bool and forward. Okay. And then on this uh, index plus plus, instead of increasing index, we're going to say uh, index is either going to go add one or it's going to minus one. So I'll say index equals forward, using a ternary operator right here. And so if it's true, then index is going to be index plus one. And then if it's false, then it's going to be index minus one. All right, so this is the true condition, this is the false condition, and this is the condition. Uh, now that we've made it possible for index to go down, uh, we need to add another safety check down here. So uh, there's an if statement right there, and now an else if index is less than uh, zero, then index equals uh, transforms dot length minus one. Uh, yeah, make sure to watch for those off by one errors. Uh, so if if the length of the transforms is four, if there's four transforms in there, then the last element in the list is three. Uh, so we don't want to go any higher than three. Okay, and that should be good. Now, on these waypoints here, oh, and because uh, I've changed the, the method signature, all those uh, references got lost, not to worry. Just t click the top one, hold shift, click the bottom one, bring back in that path, get transforms from array and cycle. Um, so right now, uh, they should this sh should go in a backwards pattern. So with these uh, transforms right here, it's going from three to two to one, uh, back down to zero, and then it'll cycle back down to three once it's once it's there. There we go. Uh, however, if I take all three of the all of these and I tick that box, um, so now it's sending true instead of false. Now it's going forward instead of backward. And come to think of it, I actually probably should have made the default setting um, bool backward and then switched these sort of things. Uh, so that way I don't have to tick every single box when something's forward, because that really ought to be the default behavior. But uh, whatever. It essentially works the same way. OK, great. So now we have um, a cycling kind of setup where we can say whether we go forward or backward. Okay, so now let's make, give another option for getting a transform from an, from an array. 
and have it uh, randomize. So public void randomize. This one I don't think needs any arguments. And uh, in this case, we'll just say index equals random dot range somewhere between zero and transforms dot length. Okay, and uh, Unity is not liking this random dot range right now, and that is because random exists in system and also in Unity engine, and Rider ever so helpfully added this extra line there that I did not want. So um, I'll just uh, say to disambiguate it, I could either say unity engine dot random dot range, uh, or I could add uh, another field up here, such as saying uh, using random equals uh, unity engine dot random. Semicolon. And that'll say whenever I say random, I'm referring to this version uh, rather than having to type it every time down here. Okay, so now we have a way of randomizing, and then uh, after that index, we'll need to say output.invoke. And actually, actually, just be, I'm just gonna copy this line. Because it's not enough to just to get the index, we need to actually send that out. Great, so that's, that's it for our randomization function. Actually, there's an error with this, but I'll address that next. So now with all these waypoints, um, I could just go through them individually, but to test it a little better, I'm just going to select them all. And instead of the path cycle, I'll have it randomize. So I'll run this, see what it does. And the uh, it's moving around, bouncing around to randomly chosen different points. So now it's at one, going to two, One, two, and I'll give it one more. And it looks like it stopped. Uh, is that a lag spike? Well, let's see. Stats? No, I FPS is pretty darn good. Um, it's just stuck at waypoint two. What could be happening there? Well, uh, what's, what's going on is that once it reaches a waypoint, it only outputs once that it's reached the target, because it only happens in a single frame. Uh, but random.range could be any one of these waypoints, including the waypoint we're already at. And when we're at the waypoint, uh, looking at this, uh, how this move to target works, uh, at target was true before, and it's true again, uh, so we're not going to... Um, this is not going to get... This condition isn't going to get satisfied, so this relay input isn't going to happen, and so we're not going to be uh, telling the um, path to change the change the waypoint again. So we need to deal with that special case of basically just pre in this randomization, uh, prevent it from outputting the same index uh, twice in a row, or more to the point, never output the index that you're already at. And that's actually a pretty generally useful math function, I, I can imagine, um, you know, beyond this uh, this project. So I'm going to make a static method for it, uh, just to say um, random no repeat uh, is, is what I want to get here. So I'm going to create a new script here, just for some static methods, a C sharp script, and I'll, I'll call it uh, random statics. Open this up. And uh, I'll just see, delete the start and update. Delete those. And this is going to be a static class that does not inherit from mono behavior. Uh, the idea of a static is that you can call it from anywhere. And it's, it's good for pure functions, like the kind that we're about to write now, uh, that, that are also not tied to a scene. Uh, so here, uh, create my method. So public uh, int random no repeat. So th this will need uh, the, the range that it can go with the, the, the minimum to the maximum. Uh, so that will be int um, int minimum, or I'll just call it min, int max. Uh, so between those two we have the range. And then also the number that we don't want, want to repeat. So int, uh, I'll just call it uh, index. Um, var result 
start off by initializing it to the index and then say while result is equal to the index, uh, then result equals random dot range min max. Okay, and thank you Unity for importing random. I did not want that as ever. Okay, so now we okay so we, now we have right here. So if we start off by initializing the result to the index, uh, and so this is going to run at least once. Then we get a random number, and since this is in a while loop, if we happen to have chosen the index in this little randomization, then this condition will still be true, and then we just try again, and again and again and again until we find something. Uh, now this could lock up the program, like if you give it a say a range from zero to zero. Um, then the random dot range will always return zero and then your program will crash. So we definitely don't want that to happen. So I'll put in a um, condition right up here at the top and say if uh, max is less than or equal to min, then just return the index. Uh, so this one, in this case, we will repeat, but that's because we got bad data. So garbage in, garbage out, just don't lock up the program. Uh, if you all, oh, and then also, uh, I can't believe I forgot this, uh, we'll need to return the result. <laughs> Otherwise, this uh, method does nothing. Okay. So after we've calculated the result, tried as many times as we need to, then we return it. Uh, and then also, just as an additional safeguard, because while loops are super dangerous, uh, I'll say um, uh, var uh, max attempts equals, actually, sorry, var attempts equals zero. And then while result equals index and attempts is less than, let's say, 40. If, if you've uh, failed 40 times in a row, uh, I think there's something wrong with this array. Um, so and attempts is less than 40. Then down here, attempts plus plus. OK, just to make absolutely sure we don't get locked in a while loop. So each time we go through this, attempts goes up. And if we get to too many, uh, then we'll fail this condition and just return whatever the current result is. All right, now there is a compiler error here. Oh, and that's because this is a static method. This is a static class, so this method needs to be static. So I'll just put in a static right there, get rid of that little red line I was seeing there. OK, so now that I have this general purpose uh, random no repeat function, I can go into my randomization and then change this line from using Unity's built-in random.range to saying random statics dot random no repeat. And then I'll send it zero transforms.length and also index. So let's uh, try that out. And actually, just to make sure that uh, it's working, I'm going to remove one of these waypoints uh, to make it more likely that we get a repeat. Um, so I'll uh, run this. And oh, yeah, so I'll also shrink that down. So zero, one, or two, make sure that there are no empty fields in there. And now my platform is moving between zero, one, uh, waypoint two, waypoint one. Actually, I'm going to speed it up a little bit so that we test this a bit faster and make sure, so we can be really confident that it can handle repeats or that they're just never happening. Uh, maybe I want to make this even faster still, 30. OK, so that's a lot of bounces. I'm pretty sure just with three elements, we would have gotten some repeats using normal randomization at this point. And uh, this is not erroring out. So OK, I think we are good in terms of randomization. Uh, Next thing, uh, just as another option in this um, move to target kind of setup, is uh, I'd like to be able to just directly set uh, what transform we go to. And that, I guess saving the easiest thing for last. In fact, I'll put it near the top. Uh, public void set int uh, value. And here we can just say index equals value. 
uh, and then copy this output line right here. Okay, so that gives us the option on these waypoints. Actually, I'll try using all of them just to show the full uh, variation. So zero will randomize, and one, we can have it uh, cycle forwards, and then for two, I uh, will get transform from array and set and explicitly say two goes to zero. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and make a third, fourth one, and then you know put that uh, over somewhere else. And waypoint three, I'll uh, maybe uh, make this cycle backwards. Okay, so two will skip over three and just go straight to zero. Uh, three will cycle back, one will cycle forward, and zero goes somewhere random. All right, now if we run that and speed it up, 20. So it goes two, zero, one, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, one, two, and so on. And the conditions I set up might cause it to never get to three, but whatever. Oh, uh, actually, no, there's, there should be some condition where it goes to three, because one of them randomizes. Oh, except that in my path, I forgot to update this list. So let's just uh, make sure that we have it fully functional here. Great, so now um, that makes it possible for zero to find three in its randomization. Uh, I'll speed it up, not in play mode now. Okay, so there I was able to go to three on at least one occasion. And one, so all the all of them are reachable. Each waypoint has slightly different logic as to where it goes and, and how it works. Okay, so one more thing I'd like to get to is, uh, right now the platform is always bouncing uh, from one place to another, it never stands still. So I'd like to give it the option of stopping for a moment before moving on. And essentially what is needed for that is to introduce a delay. Right now, as soon as we reach the target, we tell the path to get a new target. And uh, whenever the path is called, you know, a new target comes out. Uh, so instead, we'll just want, to, instead of having um, this call right here, we'll introduce a delay and kind of put that as like an interrupt. Uh, and I'll, I'll work, use with waypoint zero for that. So uh, down here in my folder, I'll create a new C sharp script and I'll call it a timed event because we can use this for anything that has a delay. Get rid of the unnecessary stuff. Get rid of the unnecessary stuff. Um, please leave a comment if anyone knows how to just change what our default mono behavior looks like, because um, that's always kind of a nuisance having to delete all that stuff that I never ever want. Uh, anyway, so in here, our timed event, will uh, this should know what our delay is. So uh, serialize field, and uh, so I'll call it a float, so I'll just call it a duration. And then we'll need a public method for when the timed event begins. So uh, public void begin. And uh, then uh, this will call a different method after a certain amount of time, or will make something happen after another bit of time. Uh, so uh, one built-in Unity function for that is invoke, uh, but for invoke to work, we need another method. So I'll just say private void end, and then inside of begin, I could say invoke end and duration. So this 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 method will have this amount of time after this, and on end. Uh, we can just put in a serialized field, unity event on end, uh, which means I need to bring in um, unity engine dot events. So just make sure to have that using statement on end, and then in end on end dot invoke. Okay, so we can use this timed event for anything in your game that you want to, where that needs a delay. So now in waypoint zero, I'll just bring in this timed event. And on reach target, instead of talking to the path, we'll tell the uh, timed event, so bring in itself, check for the timed event, have it begin, and let's give this uh, duration, say 1.5 seconds, and then on end, that's when we tell the path uh, to randomize. All right, so let's run that. 
So now it goes to so it goes to zero and stops, and goes somewhere else until it comes back to zero and stops again. Okay, one other thing I like to add is just a little bit of flair on this timed event is to give some indication to the user that like something's changed uh, whenever it reaches that that zero point, and I'm going to indicate that with a little bit of color. Uh, so I'm going to create a new material. Uh, just make a blue and uh, get our blue color and the RGB values. Uh, maybe lighten it up a little bit. Get kind of a nice color right there. Attach that blue to the. Actually, no, I don't need to attach it to the platform. Then in waypoint zero, so I want this to change to blue once it reaches and then go back to our default color uh, once we're at the end. So we know when the beginning is because this is the on reach target right here. And we can just tell the platform, uh, tell its renderer to set the material to this blue color. And then on end, just add a plus right there and tell the platform to uh, set where's the renderer material to, uh, I guess, our default material. All right, and then if you want other waypoints to change the color of the platform, then you can just set those in there on reach target. Let's see if that works. So it's blue whenever it's there, and as soon as it goes somewhere else, um, it changes back to its default color. Thank you very much for watching. If you had any trouble uh, following along or you just want to see the full project uh, in place, uh, I have a link in the description below going to my uh, GitHub open source project uh, where I have all the files involved with this. Uh, so the, the example setup uh, with this moving platform is inside of uh, assets, uh, playcraft, and examples. This is a moving platforms. There's, there's nothing else in here because all of the scripts uh, that are used are inside of the tools folder. Because what this project is actually for is a character controller. Uh, in first person, third person, AI, flying first person, first person uh, that essentially replaces the uh, thing that comes in Unity standard assets uh, that has a lot of limitations to it that I don't uh, particularly like. Um, so this is a super extensible way uh, form of character controller, and some of the scripts in it just happen to be useful uh, for making a moving platform setup, even though they weren't really written for that purpose. Yeah, feel free to check that out. Uh, any of the, the code or any of the other uh, parts of it as to how this works. Uh, it's open source, so you can use it in your project as much as you like. Uh, if you think you can contribute, that would be awesome. Just uh, take a fork of the project and uh, send it back, and I'll uh, make sure to look at uh, what you contributed uh, to get it integrated. Um, and also, if you don't want to go through the whole process of cloning or downloading the process uh, project, I periodically upload stable states um, of this whole thing inside of this playcraft install.unity package. So you can just uh, download this, uh, click on that, download, and uh, once that is in here with your Unity project open, you can just double click on it and it will bring in uh, all of that stuff um, uh, into your project. Uh, if you don't have VR I would or not interested in that, I would recommend unticking that because uh, that requires some additional plugins uh, to not have compiler errors, or you can just delete the folder if you forget. Um, and that, that will include everything that's in this, and as well as a character and a bunch of other uh, generally helpful scripts that you can use. I intend to update this over time, so you know the longer it goes, the more stuff that will be there, uh, but everything else that's working here will still be present. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.